We all know that in today's world, data is king. It's the new oil, the new currency, and companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon have built empires on it, using data to drive recommendations, advertisements, and more. But this central control of data brings its share of problems. These centralized entities not only gate your access to data, deciding who sees what and when, but they also profit from it. They monetize your data by targeting ads based on your behavior, profiting from your activity, and rarely sharing these rewards with you. Now let's consider a personal example. As a YouTube content creator, all the data related to your channel, your videos, your views, your likes, it's all centrally controlled by YouTube. You rely on their platform for accurate reporting, but even more than that, you're at their mercy when it comes to policy changes and enforcement. Imagine receiving a copyright claim on one of your videos, even though it's entirely your original content. Now this is a real problem that many creators face and even I myself have faced in the past. A mistaken copyright claim can lead to your video being taken down, cutting off your viewership and ad revenue, and even if it's an error, the process to resolve this can be long and tedious, during which your content is lost in the void and so is your income. This level of control can put your livelihood at risk. It's for reasons like these that many are looking to decentralize storage. This technology seeks to put the control of data back into the hands of users, democratizing the digital landscape. So now let's imagine a world where data is not stored in a single location, but spread out across numerous devices worldwide. This is the concept behind decentralized storage. In traditional storage systems, data is kept in one place, such as a server or data center. These centralized systems are vulnerable to hacks, censorship, and failures. Now enter decentralized storage, a new method of storing data that eliminates these issues. Instead of storing all data in one place, it is divided, encrypted, and spread across a network of computers or nodes. Each node only stores a tiny piece of the overall data, making it virtually impossible for any single point of failure or attack. When you want to retrieve your file, the network finds the pieces across multiple nodes, decrypts them, and reassembles them into their original file. This process offers enhanced security, privacy, and robustness against data loss. In a nutshell, that's how decentralized storage works. Now, in the quest for better data management, solutions like IPFS and Filecoin have emerged, pioneering the space of decentralized storage. They've made great progress, but we're still just scratching the surface of this technology's potential. However, exciting news is on the horizon. BNB, known for their solutions like Binance Smart Chain, has just released a new and superior alternative for decentralized storage known as BNB Greenfield. Now, this project promises to further revolutionize how we think about data storage, offering robustness, privacy, and control like we haven't had before in a Web3 ecosystem. Now, I'm thrilled to share that BNB has sponsored this video, and I've teamed up with them to bring you a hands-on guide to their new decentralized storage ecosystem. This is a brand new platform, but today I'm going to show you how you can interact with it and learn more about it completely for free. All right, so throughout the rest of the video, I'm going to share with you more about how BNB Greenfield works, and I'm going to show you a quick demo of how you can test it out using their test network, which is out right now. Before I do that, I just want to say this is a sponsored video. So everything I say you should take with a grain of salt. You definitely should be skeptical, but I want to put your mind uh, kind of at ease a little bit and just say that I get all kinds of offers, literally hundreds of offers from Web3 and crypto related companies, and I turn all of them down, even if they're offering me tens of thousands and like massive amounts of money to promote them on this channel. I would never tell you guys to go buy any type of cryptocurrency investment. I would never even promote that or talk about that on this channel. The reason I'm actually allowing BNB to sponsor this video is because this is strictly a developer technology, right? This is for people that want to build Web3 applications. They want to get access to this new kind of use case of decentralized storage. And I thought a lot of you would be interested in this, especially because it's free. You can mess around with it. And I know myself personally being someone who's more into Web3. I have an entire blockchain course. As soon as I heard of this, I thought that this really had a ton of cool use cases and allowed me to build some more Web3 apps that before I didn't know how I would go about building that would be fully decentralized. So let me just kind of walk you through how this platform works and really what it is. And then you'll see some of the use cases that become available with this type of tool. Again, this is not any type of investment thing. I'm not telling you to go buy any BNB. I'm showing you this strictly from a developer perspective because of the dApps that this enables you to build. I know a lot of you will find it interesting. All right, so let me just talk about what BNB Greenfield is. Well, really, this is a decentralized storage network. So it's a separate chain right now. It's a test network and it has a cross chain bridge with the Binance smart chain. So what that means is when you want to start using this, you can buy BNB or you can get on the test network in this case, and you can transfer that directly over to BNB Greenfield. So the currency that's used here is BNB, and that's what you use when you're going to be paying for storage. 
So just like you would pay for some type of Amazon storage bucket, that's the exact same thing here in BNB Greenfield. Now, the way this works is you have a blockchain network, which is BNB Greenfield. You then have a network of decentralized storage providers. Now, these decentralized storage providers are just nodes like in any other blockchain. So they could be provided by a company, say like Amazon Web Services, who's providing a bunch of them for the test network, or they could be an individual like me who has a big server in my basement. These storage providers put up some kind of stake. This stake is their collateral. So if they behave maliciously or they delete your data or they don't process your requests, then part of that stake will get slashed. So just like how any other blockchain network works, that's proof of stake. That's how BNB Greenfield works. So we have the Greenfield network, which is storing the ledger of all of the metadata of the storage, then the storage providers, which are connected to that network and then are processing your different requests, allowing you to upload and download data in a decentralized manner. I know this can be a little bit confusing. The architecture is obviously more complicated than what I just described, but we have the blockchain network itself. We have the storage providers, and then they kind of bridge together. So if you're actually going to be uploading data, you're essentially picking what storage provider you want to go to. You're agreeing to all of the different fees and billing, which cannot change, right? Because we're in a decentralized network here. And then you're paying those fees and being able to upload, download your data, just like you would in any type of centralized storage network. So with that said, let's have a look at some of the use cases here of BNB Greenfield. So storage flexibility, data configuration, we kind of understand that, but native smart contract ecosystem. So the really cool thing here is that unlike some other type of storage we have like IPFS, Filecoin, whatever, with uh, BNB Greenfield, you can actually control your storage containers and upload, download, or access data using different smart contracts that are Ethereum compatible or that are running on the Binance smart chain. So that means you as a developer, you can build a dApp connected to Binance, and then you can actually give people access to, say, a video or a text file or a PDF or a set of exercises data that you're selling from BNB Greenfield. So this was what was really cool to me because we have the ability to have permissions on data for viewership and access. So if I want to sell you some type of course in a decentralized manner, what I can do is actually give you access to a decentralized video that you know exists and that is sitting there and that's not going to be removed based on the logic that exists inside of the smart contract that owns that video. So you pay some fee, you get access to the video. Whereas if I was making a course and selling it centralized, I could sell it to you and the next day I could shut it down and I could rip all of those videos off my central provider or alternatively, my central provider like Amazon, Google, whatever, could just turn off my storage. They could delete all of my videos and all of a sudden you, my paying customers, have nothing to access. So hopefully you kind of get the idea here, but this gives you the ability to control your own data and monetize it in whatever way you see fit by writing custom logic and controlling whatever payment method you want it to be. So actually, as I move down here, we can talk about some of the use cases. So number one, website hosting. This is actually pretty powerful because you might have seen during COVID and during a lot of other times, websites can just get ripped down or taken down by storage providers. Let's say I have some kind of controversial website or I'm talking about something that Amazon doesn't like and I use Amazon Web Services services, well, they can just delete my account and they can just get rid of my website or they can refuse me service. They're fully in their legal right to do that. If you're using a decentralized network, that doesn't happen. You can't have this censorship that we've seen happen quite often, right? Personal cloud storage. Let's say you want to back up your files. You want to make sure they're not going to get lost. You don't want to store them with one or another provider. Obviously, you can do that blockchain data storage. So as we've seen with networks like Ethereum, it can be extremely expensive to store data on the blockchain with something like Greenfield. That's going to be a much more affordable and just better way to do that. Publishing data, posts, whatever, social media, token curated registries and personal data market. Now, there's a ton of other use cases, and I'm sure you guys can probably use your imagination and come up with more. But that's kind of what this network is promising. All right. So with all of that said, let me give you a super quick demo on how you can start using this if you want. And you can literally go on the test net in the next like 10 minutes and actually upload some data and view kind of all the permissions and how everything works. All right. So to start working with this technology, what you need to do, first of all, is have MetaMask set up on your computer. Now, I've already got that installed. I'll imagine most of you do as well. Next, what you're going to do is go to this BNB chain list and you're going to add the different test networks that you need so you can actually start working with BNB Greenfield. Now, this uh, link that I have right here is just a quick start guide. I'll link that in the description if you want to click through this. But if I click on this link here, you can see this is bnbchainlist.org. This shows you all of the different chains that are here. So what I can do is I can connect my wallet. OK, so I'm connected right now and then I can select the different uh, networks that I want. So the network that I need here is the Greenfield Mekong testnet or however you pronounce that. So I can click on that and click add to MetaMask. 
and then we'll add it here. Now I am already on that network, so it's not going to add it for me. You can just automatically add that to MetaMask. Then you also want the BNB Smart Chain Testnet. The reason you need that one is because you need to transfer assets from BNB uh, Smart Chain to the BNB Greenfield network. Okay. So add both of those to MetaMask. Once you have those on MetaMask, we're going to go access a faucet. The faucet's going to give us some BNB. We then can transfer that BNB into the BNB Greenfield token, and then we can actually just start working with the decentralized storage. So to access some BNB, we need to go to the BNB Discord. So click this link. It will give you an invite uh, to the Discord. The URL here is, if I can go here, BNB Chain. So discord.com slash invite slash BNB Chain. Let me open this up here. Okay, and now that you're in here, what you need to do is kind of accept the rules or whatever. You're going to go to start here. Uh, I think you need to like click on something like I accept the rules. Go to roles. Click on any of the roles here. I just selected all of them. Then you're going to go to the testnet faucet. Now, from the testnet faucet channel, you just type slash faucet and then your BNB address. So the way you can get that address, if you're not familiar, is you can go back to Chrome here and go to MetaMask. Make sure you're on uh, the correct network. So you're going to be on the BNB smart chain testnet. Just going to click this button right here, which will copy the account address. And then if you go back to Discord, you can just paste that in and hit enter. When you do that, it's going to send you some BNB. You'll see for me if I can get down to present that it's going to tell me I can't make another request because I just did one this morning. But that will give you 0.1 BNB, which will be enough to kind of interact with the test network. You can run this command every 24 hours. So that's how you access the faucet. Uh, from the faucet, or once you access the faucet, you'll get sent that BNB, and then you can interact with Greenfield. So there's this software right here called Deseller. Now, Deseller is a user interface. It's a website that you can go to, and it acts just like almost Google Drive, where you can just upload files, uh, delete files, etc. So that's what I'm going to show you how to use. There's also a ton of different commands you can run here from the command line. I won't walk you through that because I'm sure many of you will kind of mess with that on your own if you're interested in that. Okay. So I'm going to go here to Deseller. Now from Deseller, we need to connect our wallet. So I'm just going to disconnect this so that I can kind of show you the process again. So I'm going to click on Connect Wallet. I'm going to go to MetaMask. Then I'm just going to choose the account here once this finishes loading. All right, so it's going to pop up MetaMask. It's asking me to switch networks to the Greenfield network. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then it's going to ask me to sign this. Now, this signature here is essentially allowing the DAP kind of access to my account such that I can upload, delete files, all of that. Because really what we're using on this website, right, is just the DAP. And the DAP is what's kind of controlling the Greenfield network. So I'm just going to go ahead and sign this. It asks you to sign a few things. OK, so that's fine. We'll sign this, sign, and then it brings us up here. Don't worry about this error. Everything is fine. And from here, we can create storage buckets and do what we need to. However, for some of you, you're not going to have access to enough um, BNB tokens, right? Like you haven't done the transfer yet. So what you'll need to do is go here to where it says wallet. Let me make this full screen. And you're going to transfer tokens from the BNB smart chain using this kind of link that they have, this bridge to BNB Greenfield. Now, you'll see that I already have tokens. So it, these are the uh, tokens I have available in my Greenfield balance because I already transferred them. But for you, what you'll need to do is transfer in. So you're going to switch networks. So what I need to do is switch to the BNB Smart Chain. OK, so let's go ahead and do that. And then I have the ability to type in any BNB that I have. So like zero point whatever that I want to transfer. And then I can transfer that across to BNB Greenfield. Now I can also switch this around and then I can transfer from BNB Greenfield to Binance Smart Chain. So you can see I have a few tokens. So I can do 0 0.05 like that. And then I can transfer that off. OK, so let me go ahead and sign this and we'll do that confirmation and you'll see that I will now transfer out. All right. So that transfer finished. I was just trying to show you that this does work. Now what we can do is go to buckets and we can create a storage bucket if we have enough tokens. Right. I showed you already have some tokens for you guys. You'll need to transfer to get them. So I'm going to go to new bucket. I can name this bucket whatever I want so long as it follows some of the rules. So let's go with Tim's bucket like that. Uh, only lowercase letters. Okay, so Tim's bucket, not nuggets, bucket. Okay, looks like that's fine. Uh, gas fee is this. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. And we can also choose the storage provider that we want to use. Now, right now, Amazon Web Services is providing some of these uh, providers or some of these storage buckets. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and use that one. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so I have to sign this transaction and pay that small gas fee to go ahead and create the bucket. Once the bucket is created, I can then go ahead and upload files. All right, so Tim's bucket has been created. 
if I click into here, we can go ahead and make a file. So I can upload something up to 256 megabytes. That's during the testnet phase. Eventually, that'll be much larger. So let me go pick a file to upload and we'll see how that works. All right, so I'm just uploading a file here called blockchainexpert.png. That's the course I have for Web3 development. So you can see here that we have this pre lock storage fee. Now, depending on the size of your file, this will be different. If it's larger, it's going to be more. But this is essentially to make sure that you're always going to be able to access this asset because anytime you download and upload, this kind of costs a certain amount of money. So what this is saying here is, OK, we're going to put this file here, but depending on the amount of times that someone downloads it, we're going to need to charge a certain amount for that. So we're going to lock this fee just to ensure that we can always allow someone to download this file. Now, in this case, it's literally less than a cent. You can see it's like a micro BNB. Uh, anyways, there's more information about this on the website, but it has to do with kind of downloading, uploading and accessing that file. All right, so I'm going to upload this file. Let's give this a second to complete and then let's see what we can do from there. All right, so you can see this file has been uploaded now inside of my bucket, which I can view. I can go here and I can decide to delete it or I can view the metadata of this, which is stored on the blockchain. So here you can see this is private to me, meaning no one else can access this. It's only my wallet that currently has permission. Now I can go and change some of those permissions if I want. But for now, you can see when we uploaded it, the prim primary sorry, storage uh, provider address and their seal address, as well as the object hash, which you don't really need to know. And then I can download this if I like. OK, now what else can we do here? If I press on this, it says there's some quota to download. I'll go ahead and click confirm and you'll see that it will download this file for me. And now I get the image appearing that did cost me a tiny, tiny amount. But again, a fraction of a BNB to do that. OK, so let me get out of this now and then let's continue. All right. So I think with that said, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover. I will mention that if you want to do the permissions or more advanced logic, obviously you got to write that into a DAP or you can go to the command line tool and you can start giving different addresses permissions to different files. Right now, this is completely private, again, meaning only you can access and view this. No one else on the network has access. You'd have to give them permission to do that. Anyways, I think this is a really cool technology. Hopefully you guys got some value from this video and you're going to mess around with BNB Greenfield. It's completely free. I'll leave all of the links you need in the description down below. And I'd love if you let me know what you think of it in the comments. With that said, I'll wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next one.